and a hundred years, when most people reading this and the person writing this are long gone, Musk's cars and rockets will still be circling the earth and the skies. How can such a person get started against all odds is the question I ask here. And, more importantly, what can we learn from him? The next Bill Gates will not build an operating system. The next Larry Page or Sergey Brin won't make a search engine. Tomorrow's champions will not win by competing ruthlessly in today's marketplace. They will escape competition altogether, because their businesses will be unique. Peter Thiel in 0 to 1. In the book 0 to 1, prominent entrepreneur and investor Peter Thiel shares his vision on what it takes to create an extraordinary company. Specifically, Thiel believes that instead of making incremental upgrades to an existing product or service, a company must aim to do something completely new to avoid ruthless competition. While Thiel has worked with many impressive people over the years, Thiel points to Elon Musk as a particularly successful member of the PayPal mafia that has gone zero to one many times. At only the age of 44, just some of Musk's successes include building the world's first global online payments company, PayPal, and landing reusable rockets on ocean platforms, SpaceX. He also co-founded SolarCity, which just closed a $338 million round for providing commercial solar and energy storage, and his electric car company Tesla now has 325,000 pre-orders for the Tesla Model 3, which is good for $14 billion in future revenues. Meanwhile, in his spare time, Musk draws up plans for revolutionary transport systems, such as the Hyperloop and VTOL supersonic jet aircraft known as the Musk Electric Jet. That's going from zero to one at least a few separate times, with many years in his career left to come. How does Elon do it? The life of Elon Musk. In the infographic and article from Funders and Founders, Vital highlights key circumstances, decisions, and results in Elon Musk's life. Here are some of the key inflection points that helped him to build his massive empire. Elon was born in South Africa to an engineer father and model mother on June 28, 1971. Elon read 10 hours a day as a kid, and even read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. At age 12, Elon sold his first video game that he coded for $500. After being inspired by Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Elon decided that his new life mission would be to save humanity. Leave Stanford PhD program after two days to help found Zip2, which he started with a $28,000 loan from his father. He later received proceeds of $22 million from the sale of Zip2 to Compaq, which he used to start X.com. X.com merges with another online bank, Confinity, to form PayPal. Elon gets ousted as CEO from PayPal while on his honeymoon, yet still invests more money in the company regardless. He discovers that space rockets are artificially overpriced, and starts SpaceX to build his own rockets. Elon gets $250 million from the sale of PayPal to eBay. Meets Tesla founders Mark Tarpenning and Martin Eberhardt, and introduces them to J.B. Straubel. Elon invests in Tesla. After having three SpaceX rockets explode while approaching bankruptcy with Tesla, Elon takes action. He takes over as CEO of Tesla and raises an emergency fifth round of financing. Meanwhile, his fourth rocket launch with SpaceX succeeds and a $1.6 billion contract with NASA is signed. Tesla goes public at $17 per share, it trades for $250 slash share today. Elon announces reusable rockets that could make space flight 100x cheaper, and promises to also send humans to Mars by 2021 to 2031. Elon publishes the Hyperloop design, starts building the Gigafactory, unveils the Powerwall, and eventually lands a rocket on an ocean platform. What's next? Launching the Falcon Heavy rocket, starting Gigafactory production, selling the Model 3 electric car, and potentially landing on Mars are just some of the things on his future laundry list. What Musk can actually accomplish in the future is anybody's guess. We certainly won't be betting against it. Learning from the outlier. Learning from Musk might seem naive. After all he is an outlier even among billionaires. I think this is exactly why he is worth studying, you don't get insight into the extraordinary by studying the ordinary. Even with a sample size of one Musk we may find something in the way he started out that is fundamentally borrowable. Sure, we can't recreate the exact circumstances of his life for ourselves, we all have different parents, live in different countries, and have different bodies. Despite all the differences, we have control over our mindset as much as he does over his. This part of Musk we can borrow. The ways he deals with uncertainty, the books he reads, the ways he makes promises, and patches up his own mistakes are all borrowable, for example. Thinking from first principles, and not just by analogy. 
you might be skeptical about how studying another person's life can help. His circumstances are not like yours. Musk would be the first to remind us here to think from first principles, as scientists do, rather than by analogy one. Why should you think like Musk? You might know better than him after all. It's true that thinking from first principles gives a truer result. But it also takes time which is limited for all of us. Yes, it's best to think about your situation from scratch. But reasoning by analogy makes sense given that life is finite. To minimize our own mistakes we don't need to borrow the exact decisions Musk made but study the way he makes them. Then we can apply his thinking method to what we know to be true for sure. It's easy to explain greatness in hindsight, the narrative fallacy. One psychological barrier to learning from other people's lives is the narrative fallacy, making a neat story out of facts that at the time of their happening made little sense. As the classic book on improbability The Black Swan explains, we do it to deal with the randomness of life, we explain it away because we know how the story ended. We'd rather not figure out why we didn't know what we didn't know. The media often write this way. Articles about Musk call him a genius, which he is. But labels like this make his accomplishments sound like a foregone conclusion. They aren't. For example, he still has to deal with big oil companies that want to see Tesla go down. We might assume he knows what to do with this because he is a genius. But genius is not a strategy. And his victory is far from certain. As you are reading this, he is doing something to deal with the uncertainty of his situation. What sort of a mindset is he in? In this article and visualization I want to transport us inside Musk's mind to understand how he started from the absolute beginning. How did he figure out what to do with his life? How did he come up with the first money to start a business? How many businesses did he try before? Life equals decisions plus circumstances plus results. Life is a combination of decisions, things you do, circumstances, things that others do to you, including people you've never met, like politicians, and results, your decisions plus the circumstances. Labeling each significant event in Musk's life on a timeline produced a lot of decisions, unsurprisingly. It's fair to say he is a product of his decisions more than his circumstances. Musk seems to have been decisive and deliberate from the start. A quick glance at the timeline shows that his decisions by far outnumber his circumstances. When we complain about life we mostly complain about our circumstances, not our decisions. We seem to be fixated on circumstances. When I first meet a person they tend to ask about my circumstances first, where am I from? Where do I live? How long have I been in San Francisco? This is also true in other countries I've been. It's only when people get to know me that they ask why I decided to be an information designer, for example. Why do circumstances interest us more than decisions? Sure circumstances happen to us before we can even make decisions, even before we are born. But decisions are by far more interesting because that's how you change circumstances, possibly to the point that the circumstances disappear or stop mattering. Musk was born in South Africa. Is that good or bad? I think it's neither. What's more interesting is that while still a kid he decided to move to the US why did he choose the US? How did he decide to make it happen? That is the interesting part. Starting really small. Compared to what Musk is doing now, electric cars, rockets, and solar panels his first businesses were ridiculously straightforward, selling computer parts from his dorm room, running a glorified speakeasy from his house in college. Would he do this if he saw a straight path to making electric cars back in college? I think not. It looks like he took incremental steps towards a goal he had no idea how to reach at the beginning. How can I use this? If you want to start, start literally anywhere. In the long run, it won't matter where exactly you started. How many tries does it take? It took 4 tries for Musk to successfully launch his first rocket. This number is low compared to his competitors who blew up a lot more hardware before it would fly. There is one key difference, though, Musk only had enough money to launch 4 times. If the fourth time didn't fly that would have been it. How can I use this? It's hard to call Musk lucky considering the rocky start of SpaceX. You could be luckier or less lucky. The way you'll compensate for the missing luck is just more tries. Here you can compare the number of successful launches to the number of failures. The rocket size seems to grow with the increasing confidence. Still three failures at the very start is not ideal.